Hi everyone, and thank you for joining us for this video on understanding warehouse automation options, specifically the ideal operational features that make each type of automation solution a good fit. I want to start by acknowledging that implementing automation in your warehouse will inevitably provide you with advantages. The key is identifying which type of automation is the best fit for your operation to ensure you see the maximum benefits. And I definitely wanna preface this by saying that the best way to figure out which type of automation system is the best fit for you is by consulting a professional, that being a material handling systems integrator, such as Rev Storage Systems. They will be able to assess your space, products, and growth projections, among other things, in order to present you with your best option or options. However, to get you started, there are general operational features that make each type of automation solution a good fit. So in this video, we'll go through the ideal operational features for key automation solutions, pallet runners, ASR systems, voice picking, pick to light and put to light and conveyors. And I'll also say that we have a lot of information on our website on each of these systems as to how they work. So steps taken in each type of system, as well as commonly seen advantages once implemented. And I'll link each page so you can get more information. And we'll start with pallet runners. You see the first one there, an ideal operational feature for pallet runner is a high number of pallets of the same skew. And with this system, each lane should have the same skew. So the greater number of pallets that have the same skew, the more lanes you'll be able to fill in the pallet runner system. And kind of to go along with that is the next one, a low number of skews. In this type of system, lanes are usually dedicated to a single skew, like we talked about. So the lower the number of skews, the less lanes you'll need, depending, of course, on the volume of your skews. It is possible to have a high number of skews with the system, but just keep in mind that the more skews, the more lanes uh, that will be needed, and so the more space you'll need. If you require staging across shifts, a pallet runner may benefit you. For example, the night shift in a pallet runner in a pallet runner system, the night shift can stage each lane with all pallets that need to be loaded onto each truck the next day. That way, the day shift can quickly unload the already built load from a lane to be then loaded onto the corresponding truck. So it really helps ex expedite that process. The next one you see there is if you require spe specialized pallet configuration, this may be right for you. Because pallets do not touch one another in the system. So this allows for products to be transported gently through the system and it's set up to run that way. There's no human error with that, with um, accidentally hitting the pallet, the next pallet, putting it in too quickly, anything like that. Some examples of specialized pallet configurations that can benefit from this include one um, product that is non-stackable or that can be stacked only too high, as well as product that requires to be displayed on a certain way on the pallets. If you have fast throughput, uh, pallet runner can be beneficial. Since lift truck drivers don't drive into the system, the driver can retrieve a pallet and while they drive it to the loading dock, the next pallet can be retrieved from the system and be ready for the driver when they make it back to the system. So this really lends to fast throughput operations. Also, multiple drivers can be retrieving from the system at once, so that's helpful. It's also worth noting this last one here, you must maintain good quality pallets. The pallet runner carts go under the pallets in this system. Because of this, there can't be any sagging or obtrusions from the pallet. So grade A or sometimes refurbished grade B are required for the system to operate properly. It's also typically advised not to use cardboard pallets or press board pallets with a pallet runner system. They commonly can cause problems. The next automation solution we'll go through is an ASRS system. I'm going to be referencing pallets in this section, which is a unit load ASRS system, but keep in mind that there is an ASRS system for totes and cases, which is called a mini load ASRS system. This will have similar ideal operational features. 
which is why we're not breaking them out. The other thing I want to mention is that within a unit load ASR system, there are two options. There's a crane based and a shuttle based. And you can visit the unit load ASRs page on Reb's website to find out more about the differences between these two and which is better for certain types of operations. And I'll link that. So the first one there, if you have a low number of SKUs with a high number of pallets per SKU, a shuttle-based ASR system may be ideal for you. So this is kind of similar to a pallet runner system in that you'll want to dedicate each lane to a SKU. So generally, if you have a high number of pallets of each SKU, you will want deeper lanes so that each lane can house the large number of pallets of each SKU because shuttles are able to retrieve pallets placed deep within the system. Conversely, if you have a high number of SKUs with a low number of pallets per SKU, a crane-based ASR system may be ideal. A crane-based system can accommodate up to three pallets deep. Since each lane should be designated to one SKU, generally a low number of pallets of each SKU makes more sense with a crane-based system. If you have availability to store higher than 30 feet, an ASR system may really be beneficial to you because since the standard forklift's reach is only about 30 feet, this often limits the height of a traditional pallet rack system, which you may be experiencing, which results, as you, as you may know, in wasted storage space vertically. An ASR system will be able to utilize the entire available height of your distribution center. The next one there, if you store products that require date code management or scan verification, this is an ideal system to expedite that process. So if you require that, you know who you are. It's often found with pharmaceuticals, medical supplies, and food distributors. And this can really, uh, this system can accommodate that and make it a quicker process. If you have multiple distribution centers that could benefit from being consolidated into one, an ASR system may be your answer. If you've considered consolidating your distribution centers into one, you know that it can cut down on costs over time because you're not paying for extra real estate, employees, and so on. But you may also have found certain challenges with that, many of which an ASR system can eliminate. For example, Many companies don't feel they can consolidate since it will mean higher throughput requirements for one distribution center versus multiple. But an ASR system will allow for the higher throughput needed. Secondly, consolidating means needing to house a large number of products in one building. So space requirement can also be an issue. But like we talked about, the, the high density of an ASR system will allow for that. So if you're considering that, but have run across these uh, constraints or roadblocks, uh, an ASR system might be your answer there. And let's look at the next one. So something that many companies are facing these days is lack of availability of consistent warehouse labor. And with a, a less manpower is needed with an ASR system since the system does much of the work. So if you find yourself consistently taking time to hire and train new warehouse staff, which is no easy feat and is can be quite time consuming, an ASR system may be an ideal alternative for you. If you store heavy loads, a crane based system may be ideal because a crane-based system is able to handle very heavy loads up to 6,000 pounds. So this can be an ideal solution versus having a forklift or other types of equipment placing and retrieving heavy loads within the system. Freezer storage, as you know, as you may know, is, is expensive real estate. And an ASR system, they're ideal for this environment since they allow for the entire area of a freezer to be utilized. So if you have freezer storage and you feel that you're underutilizing it, an ASR system may be your answer. Now we'll move on to voice picking. And the first one you see there are distribution centers that distribute items which are regulated and require a scan verification. And if you require this, you know it can be a challenge. And like we talked about, this is also found, this is often found with pharmaceuticals, medical supplies, and food distributors. So voice picking can help expedite this process as well. 
If you have a large distribution center that distributes high volumes of SKUs, it may voice picking may be ideal for you. So if you have a distribution center that is spread out, voice picking will be ideal for you since it can direct pickers anywhere in the building. It's more ideal in this case than say pick to light, which is better suited for denser operations, which we'll discuss. Um, and also because voice picking does not require hardware installation on the racking system, it is often considered better suited and overall more cost effective for larger distribution centers than for example, again, pick to light. The next one you see there, distribution centers that fluctuate the number of workers needed based on seasons. With a voice picking system, employee training time is reduced. That's one of the advantages since they are continuously told what to do via the headset. Uh, training, the, training is a lot easier and a lot quicker. Therefore, having to add a larger number of workers for an on season is much easier and a much um, less time consuming and resource consuming process. So if that describes your distribution center, consider voice picking. Also distribution centers that regularly reconfigure pick locations, voice picking can be a good option for you. This is because voice picking, like we like we talked about, does not require hardware reconfiguration to go along with it, um, to go along with reconfiguring the pick location. So this can be a better process for you. Now we'll talk about pick to light. The first one you see there, uh, it's ideal for high operations with high density, high speed picking applications. For example, operations requiring 300 to 500 lines per man hour pick rates are an ideal candidate for pick to light. Also, distribution centers that have a team based approach to order fulfillment, pick to light is a good candidate. For example, if you do zone picking, pick to light can be beneficial just because it will work well with the way your with your operation the way it's running now. The last one there distribution centers that fluctuate the number of workers needed based on seasons. And so just like what we talked about uh, pick to, or voice picking, it, it does reduce one of the advantages of reducing employee training time because they are, as opposed to the voice picking where they're told what to do, pick to light shows them what to do via light, a, a lighting and a number system. So that is reduced. Now put to light has the similar uh, ideal operational features. The, the difference here, uh, the first one, operations that pick across multiple zones to a central location. And so if you're picking across multiple zones to then bring to one location to be, uh, to be packed and shipped, put to light can really expedite that process be just because of the way it works. You bring the products to the, pl to the one place, you scan them, the put wall, which is what it's called, um, shows them where to place those products. And the last thing we'll talk about is conveyors and conveyors are a broad category, but simply put, they move pallets or cartons from point A to point B. And there are many options to accommodate what needs to happen in between point A and point B within conveyor system types. So because of this, there are a number of operations that can benefit from conveyors. The key is identifying what will work for your products and what is needed for you in between point A and point B. So whether you need to divert products to different lanes, hold products in a queue, or get products from an upper mezzanine level to the ground level, conveyor systems will accomplish this for you. And there are various types. So to help you get an idea, I'll go through each of these, of the three broad categories of conveyors and what they're typically used to accomplish. So that way you can get an idea of, of, of which type may be right for you, type or types. And the three broad categories are transportation conveyors, accumulation conveyors, and sortation conveyors. Now I'm showing transportation conveyors here first on the screen. And I guess these are the more standard conveyor system types. Um, within this category are gravity, belt, and live roller conveyors. And these can accommodate re uh, requirements such as desired speed and product handling procedures, but for the most part, they, they are pretty straightforward, literally. They get product from point A to point B, straight, straight to the straight there. Um, 
And so this may expedite certain processes for you. The next category, accumulation conveyors, these move, move loads from point A to point B, allowing them to accumulate when necessary to allow time for equipment or other material handling resources to become available down the line. And then once these resources become available, the system will give a signal to release the next queue of products. And so this ability to slow down or speed up processes at different points within the same operation really makes these accumulation conveyors very effective for high throughput operations. And there's three types within this, zero pressure, zero contact, and minimum contact. So it depends on what your, so if, if you do require this type of system where you are, you need products to hold in a queue for resources to become available down the line, um, you really have to look at your types of products and decide which, which accumulation conveyor will work best. For example, if you have very fragile products, a zero contact conveyor will be best for you because it, it does not allow the, the products to touch one another. So oftentimes this is used for fragile products. And the last type we'll talk about is sortation conveyors. And sortation conveyors are used to direct products from one conveyor line to another. These conveyors integrate sortation diverts to get products to various locations. So they're tailored to each operation and they will identify, track, and transport products to expedite the order fulfillment process. So because of that, they're, they're really best suited for very high through operations that require products to flow to numerous locations. Um, so it, it, there's, there's a number of options within sortation conveyors. You'll see here, shoe sorter, pop-up wheel, right angle transfer, pusher style, narrow belt, tilt tray, and cross belt. And all of them in one way or another divert products to get to from one conveyor line to either multiple, it gets them to where they need to go. And they utilize various, uh, various techniques to do that and can and can divert products in various ways so these are something to consider if you have to get product to a different from one conveyor line to multiple and within your distribution center and that is our presentation i hope you uh, found it very helpful and like i said please feel free to visit the links that i've provided to find out more about how all of these different automation systems work and the other common come we've talked about some commonly seen advantages but it will provide more information on that on what you can possibly expect once these are implemented if you have any further questions please feel free to call us uh, or email us and we are happy to help you on your journey to automation thank you